This section is over determinants and Kramer's rule. So the very first thing that we're going to do is define what a determinant is. It is a value that can be computed from the elements of a square matrix. So if we have a square matrix, we can compute a single value or a single number from this square matrix. So when we talk about the determinant of a matrix, we can denote that one of three ways. We can say the three letters DET of A with or without the parentheses, or we can do it with these two bars here. So it almost looks like the absolute value of A, but we cannot take the absolute value of A matrix. So when you see those bars, know that it means the determinant of A. So first we're gonna talk about the determinant of two by two matrices because they are the easiest. And we can see the formula down here is very easy. You just multiply the diagonals, A times D, and you subtract the other diagonal, B times C. And that gives you that single value or that determinant of that square matrix. So you can see I have an example down here. We're going to find the determinant of A, which means we are going to multiply two times one, and we are gonna subtract a negative four times a negative three. Be careful of the subtraction and the negatives because they can really throw you off. So this gives us two minus here, these two negatives cancel out, and so four times three gives you 12. So the determinant of A here, the answer is negative 10. Or we could also say it like this, the determinant of A is negative 10. Either way you denote it is perfectly fine. So I have a couple of examples here. I encourage you to pause the video and try and find the determinant of these on your own. Okay, so the first one's pretty easy. You just take negative eight times two. So the determinant of M is negative eight times two, and you subtract a negative one times six. So that gives you negative 16 minus a negative six. So again, be careful of the negatives. The minus negative becomes positive, and so that gives you negative 10. So the determinant of m is negative 10 here as well, okay? In this example, it may seem a little more complicated because we don't all have just numerical values, but the process is exactly the same. So the determinant of Q is Y squared times three minus a negative two times Y. Or if we just simplify this, just rewrite it a little bit, that gives us three Y squared. Now again, watch those double negatives, minus a negative becomes positive, so plus two Y. Now you can't actually simplify this because they're not like terms, so I can't combine it. You could factor out a y, but I don't know that that's really gonna gain us any ground here. So we might as well just quit while we're ahead and say the determinant of q is three y squared plus two y. Okay, so the question becomes is why do we need determinants? What is their purpose? Well, the determinants can do one of two things for us. The very first thing that I'm gonna show you is it can help you find the inverse of a two by two square matrix. So we're going to backtrack a little bit. We're going to review. So we're going to find the inverse of this two by two square matrix by doing it the old fashioned way, what you just learned in the last section by using the row reduce, the RREF method. So to review, we take this two by two matrix, we partner it up with the identity matrix, we row reduce it, and whatever we flip flop, whatever we get over here on the right, that's going to be our inverse matrix. Okay, so we normally start with getting a one where this two is. I'm actually gonna start with a, the negative four and I'm gonna make it a zero so I can avoid fractions just one extra step. I'm going to take row one times two and add that to row two and put it back into row two. And that's gonna give me a zero on the bottom right. So I take my row, time, my row one times two up here, which gives me four, negative six, two, zero. And then I add these two rows and put them back in row two. So my row one stays the same. My row two becomes zero, negative five, 
2, and 1. Okay, now I'm going to get 1's in both of these places at the same time. So I'm going to do that by taking row 1 divided by 2 and putting that back into row 1 and taking row two divided by negative five and putting that back into row two. So my row one becomes one, negative three halves, one half, and zero. My row two becomes zero, one, negative two fifths, and negative one fifth. So the last thing that I need to do is I need to make this guy a zero. So I will do that by taking row two times a positive 3 halves, adding that to row 1 and putting it back into row 1. So let me multiply that 3 halves down here as scratch work. So 0, 3 halves. If I take 2 fifths times 3 halves, my 2's cancel out, so it gives me negative 3 fifths. And then if I do this, I multiply straight across, so negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, and 5 times 2 gives me 10. So now I'm going to add these two rows and put that back into row one. So moving my work up here, that gives me one, zero. Then one half times negative three, or sorry, one half plus negative three fifths, I need a common denominator. So my LCD of that will be 10. So multiply by the missing pieces gives me 5 over 10 minus 6 over 10, so that gives me a negative 1 tenth, and 0 minus 3 10 gives me negative 3 tenths. My row 2 stays exactly the same. Okay, so over here on the right, I have my inverse matrix. So D inverse is negative 1 tenth, negative 3 tenths, negative two-fifths, and negative one-fifth. And so we have found the inverse of the matrix using our row reduce echelon form method, okay? But I told you before we got to this example that we can do it, we can find the inverse of a two by two square matrix by using determinants. So let me show you that formula. So to find the inverse of a two by two matrix, you multiply it by one divided by the determinant, and then you have to do a couple of other adjustments. Notice we have A and D here. We flip flop those places. D becomes the top left and A becomes the bottom right. And then our B and C, they stay in the same places, but notice that our signs switch. So if we multiply our one divided by our determinant through this matrix, as a scalar multiplication, then that gives us our inverse matrix. So notice I have the exact same matrix here as what I just did back here. And we're gonna find the inverse of it by using the determinants of matrices. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna find the determinant of D. And actually we already did this in my first example. That was two minus 12, which gave us negative 10. So our formula here, D inverse, is one over negative 10, or I prefer my negatives on the top, negative 1 tenth, times, instead of two and one, now it's going to be one and two. And notice here, I had a negative three and a negative four, but my formula says to negate them, so that's going to be a positive three and a positive four. So if I multiply the scalar through all of my entries, then that's going to give me my D inverse. So my D inverse is negative 1 tenth times 1, that gives me negative 1 over 10, negative 1 over 10 times 3, so negative 3 over 10, negative 1 over 10 by 4, but that reduces by 2, so that gives me negative 2 over 5, and negative one over 10 times two, again reduced by two, so that gives me negative one over five. So notice how much quicker and easier this way is to find the inverse of a two by two matrix, rather than using the row reducing way. And I tend to think when we do these row reduce things, we have a lot of mistakes, a lot of little mistakes that just keep adding and keep adding on each other. Here, we don't have that possibility. We just get our inverse and that's it.
So here's one advantage of finding the determinants. Now, in this video, we saw the determinants of two by two matrices. In the next video, we're gonna see determinants of three by three matrices and larger.